it's pretty much become impossible to talk about Azure these days without first understanding about app services as a whole and where they fit. As opposed to a virtual machine, app services allow us to bypass that layer of OS management and IaaS infrastructure management and shift that focus up to run in our applications. You know, at its core, app services is a series of PaaS-based application services. So if you think about it, it consists of the following four. There are web apps, mobile apps, logic apps, and API apps. And all of these can run on the same underlying infrastructure of virtual machines that support them. So let's take a look at web apps in more detail. Well, web apps were formerly known as websites. If you're familiar with classic Azure, this is what we called them back then. And they allow us to host and build web applications using a variety of programming languages that we can choose from. They offer auto-scaling capabilities as well as high availability, and also include a whole bunch of DevOps features that enable us to automate deployments from things like GitHub, Visual Studio Team Services, and other sources as well. Then we have mobile apps, which also run on that underlying infrastructure, and they allow us to build a mobile device backend. Essentially gives the developers that mobile-friendly environment platform. It still is highly scalable, highly available, and allows developers to build native apps for iOS, Android, Windows, and cross-core platform apps are supported as well. One of the biggest benefits you know, is really that this shares the same app service deployment to reduce those run rates and you know bring the costs down. Then we have one of my personal favorites, which are logic apps, and these really allow us to automate business processes. Think of it like creating your own orchestration workflows. There's an orchestration engine under the covers that helps us out with various tasks that we want to perform. And think of these examples like, you know, every time your app calls an API, I want to do some task, or every time there's some data in blob storage, I want to do some work on that, or maybe there's an external SaaS service I want to connect to. Perhaps I'm trying to do something more around the social media space, like check in tweets or check in Slack messages, and then I'll want to take some series of actions. So it's a very easy way to build automated workflows without really having to learn a lot of code. Then we have API apps as well, and so these allow us to easily create, consume, call APIs. You know, we can basically use our own APIs as part of these, uh, and these could also be from external API services as well. So then we get on some of the security features, and Azure App Services are highly secured. Any of the app service features that you consume will run on their own isolated virtual machine. They meet all the security standards, so ISO, SOC, PCI compliant, all the main ones are there. And Azure Active Directory is fully integrated as well, so it can be used to authenticate users along with social logins. And in addition, Microsoft recently added managed service identities, which are currently in preview. But a managed service identity from Azure Active Directory allows your app to easily access other AAD protected resources such as Azure Key Vault. The other things that are really important are some of the you know, features that are supported from a security standpoint are custom domains, SSL TLS, custom certificates that includes wildcard or subject alternate name, supports multiple directory authentication protocols, so OAuth, OpenID, and Microsoft Active Directory. And finally, this is really important, with the release of web application firewall, this can be integrated into your web apps and app services as well. So then we have DevOps features. And um, pretty much, you know, you can't release a good development platform without having a lot of DevOps features. So Microsoft includes the most common ones here for you. So, you know, CI CD support is available through Git, GitHub, Bitbucket, Docker Hub, as well as VSTS as well. You can integrate with all your popular IDE e tools such as Visual Studio. You know, that could be the Community Edition, could be Visual Studio Code. You know, that's all available for you there. Um, and it also supports deployment from external folder sources such as Dropbox and OneDrive as well. So if you just want to get your application up that method, you can, you can do that as well. App Service also has a unique feature called Deployment Slots which allow us to stage environments. And so we can basically have like a stage environment, a prod environment, we can deploy the stage and then flip it into prod. And you'll hear more about that, you know, later on in the course. So if we look at app service plans now in a little bit more detail, you know, app service plans represent the collection of physical resources under the covers that are going to host our apps. This is where our apps are gonna run on top of. So first we have to define the following, the subscription the plan belongs to, the location, so it could be like North Central US, the pricing tier, 
So it could be free, shared, basic, standard, premium, or isolated, and we'll talk more about that one shortly. And the instant size, so this is the size of the VMs running under the covers, and you'll notice when you look at the pricing of these, they pretty much map to the VM sizes if you went and deployed a VM um, like you would just for IaaS. Once you've got that part set up, then you configure your settings. So it's around things like scale count, like how many instances do I want under the covers? What are my scale rules? Allow for auto scaling if the plan supports it. Scale up, you know, you can increase the resources associated with the app service plan. This is essentially how you would switch the plan you defined at the start if you wanted to kind of increase the resources associated with it. So let's look at the pricing tiers in a little bit more detail. So first of all, we've got those shared tiers, the free and the shared one. So these run apps on the same Azure VM as other app service apps, and this includes apps of other customers. So here, CPU quotas are allocated to each app that runs on the shared resources, and resources are not able to be scaled out. You'll need one of the other plans for that. And that brings us onto these, which are dedicated compute resource Plan. So you've got the basic, standard, premium, and there's a premium V2 tier. These run your apps on dedicated Azure VMs, so only apps in the same app service plan share the same compute resources. The higher the tier, the more VM instances are available for you to scale out. And then we've got this isolated tier, also known as app service environments. And this tier runs dedicated Azure VMs on dedicated Azure virtual networks. So they provide additional network isolation on top of compute isolation for your apps as well. And these provide the maximum scale out capabilities for you. So there's some general guidelines that you need to follow. And first of all, you know, you can select this link at the bottom, which will give you the subscription service limits and give you more details on that. But if we look at some of the guidelines in more detail, first of all, you create an app service plan for your specific applications. Then you deploy your app services to support that entire application. What you don't want to do is use a single plan for every single web app that you have. You know, that's not going to scale very well and you know, it's just going to be very hard to manage. Uh, you do want to then combine app services versus mass VM creation as well. So this is a key thing because if I'm going to go and create a whole bunch of app service plans and then put a whole bunch of app services then and spread them out, that's not going to be very cost effective. So the more I can combine my app services for that application, the better, um, you know, more cost effective it's going to be. And then you can combine other services in the same resource group. So you can mix your app service plan if you say you've got, you know, IaaS SQL servers, but you want to have web apps running in an app service plan you can do that in the same resource groups. So everything can still share the same life cycle. You know, if you destroy the resource group, it could destroy everything, the IaaS services, the app services, plus whatever other services you've decided to utilize in Azure as well. Now to wrap up, let's take a look at ASCs and you know, app service environments and kind of talk through those in a little bit more detail. So app service environments, again, are that fully isolated environment. So it's a feature of Azure App Services that allows us to reserve that dedicated compute environment for securely running those apps at high scale. You know, and ASCs can host web apps, mobile apps, API apps, as well as Azure functions on top of them. So your use cases really are around high performing apps, high CPU, high memory. You know, service instances are generally good enough but they are pulled from a common pool which is shared with other Azure customers. At very high utilization, you know, this could result in some performance problems, you know, as compute services are all suddenly requested from a whole host of people. Uh, within that, though, you've still got individual or multiple service plans that you can put on top of your ASC. So there could be a mixture of, you know, different plans that share different applications. And there are two ways we can go about deploying them, internal or external. So when we look at an internal ASC, uh, this is where a VIP is created on an internal IP address. The internal endpoint is essentially an internal Azure load balancer. These are sometimes referred to as ILB ASC. And then you've got external ASC. You know, use this option when you want your ASC to be directly accessible via the internet. You know, after selecting your VNet, you then select a number of external IP addresses you want to utilize. Again, something to stress here, this is created in a subnet of a VNet which achieves isolation. And another note, these may take a few hours to spin up. These aren't things that are just click of the button, readily accessible. They are reserving compute specifically for you. It's dedicated for you. So there is a time period as these spin up. So with all of that, this concludes this part of the module and hopefully gives you the good background on everything you need to know about app service plans. You know, make sure you understand the different plans, the different tiers 
the app service environment option. The fact is that internal and external option. And I encourage you to just check out the upcoming demo, which will guide you through you know, creating your first app service plan in Azure.